Many people think that the only way to become rich is to win a lottery. The truth is winning a lottery is the most difficult way to become rich. Because, the guy who won it will never be able to win it again in his entire life. Nor will he be able to teach others how to win a lottery. Poor people will buy lottery tickets again and again, but will never buy shares. In their whole lifetime they will spend lakhs of rupees on lotteries but will never invest even a thousand rupees in shares. Rule number one. The truth about money is that you cannot make it quick. If it comes quickly, then it will go quickly. Rule number two. Money only stays with those with patience. If you cannot wait 10 years then you need to leave this video here. History of Suislan Let's keep it short. Started in the year 1995 by Mr. Tulsi Tanti, Suislan had by the year 2007 reached its pinnacle and was the fifth largest wind energy company in the world and its share price was rupees 398. Not many companies in India came fifth in the world in manufacturing anything. Suislan was a rare gem. The success of Suislan made it the favorite of a lot of Indians in the share market. Then Suislan did what every company would try to do. It felt the Indian market could saturate, so in an attempt to expand, it tried to expand into Western countries. It entered the European market in 2007 by buying couple of European companies. In 2007 Suislan bought Senvian, then called Repower Systems, for Euro 1.4 billion, mostly with borrowed money. On top of that Suislan couldn't use cash reserves of Senvian in spite of buying it because of European laws. This was kind of a double whammy. Came 15 September 2008 and Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. Overnight the credit flow stopped, and these big wind infrastructure projects needed big credit. This was a triple whammy, the rug was pulled from under Suislan. Market crash! Ho gaya! Market crash! Ho gaya! Market crash! Ho gaya! Big projects were less after the Lehman Brothers crash, credit was still tight, the stock market the world over had one of the biggest crash and Suislan energy share because of its exposure to credit risk started to feel the heat. Debts started to pile up and the stock started to sink, it fell from Rs 459, to Rs 200, then to Rs 170, then to Rs 150, to Rs 85. By October 31, 2008 Suislan energy share was trading at Rs 40, before touching the single-digit abyss from where most stock market scripts never comes back. On November 15, 2019 Suislan energy share was trading at Rs 2.25. The hull of the Titanic was breached, and it sank, into the depths of icy dark blue stock market ocean. Only way out of the debt crisis was to sell off its assets. One by one. Suislan started to sell off its assets outside India to repay its Senvian debts. Retail investors were frustrated at this almost daily sale of some OR the other subsidiary company of Suslan. In November 2009, the company sold 35% stake of Hansen for US$370 million. In October 2011, Suislan sold its remaining 26.06% stake in Hansen Transmissions International NV to ZF Friedrichs Hafen AG for Indian rupees 8.9 billion or US dollar 110 million. In 2012, Suislan sold China Manufacturing Unit to China Power New Energy Development Company Limited for 3.4 billion rupees or US dollar 60 million. January 22, 2015, Suislan sold Senvian SC its wholly owned subsidiary, to Centerbridge Partners, a private equity firm in a deal valued at just Rs 7,200 crores. Suislan tried everything it could to save Senvian because Senvian was a profitable company, but lenders would have nothing less. Lenders wanted to sell Suslan's best assets to get back their funds. Suislan tried to take Senvian public, or even sell it at a fair price, but did not succeed. Lehman Brothers had crashed the Western markets completely. Those with money wanted to extract as much flesh from a dying prey, so they wanted Senvian at a huge discount. Suislan had no option but to exit the European market taking a Euro 1 billion loss, not Rupee billion, but Euro billion. Such bad luck would have killed any other company, but not Suslan. It pulled on. On January 17, 2017, Suislan Energy achieved 10,000 MW, 10GW installed wind energy milestone in India. Hopes sparked that Suislan energy was down but not completely out. 
but still even in 2018 Suislan energy share was trading in single digits. Nobody wanted Suislan shares, people, small retail investors, who had trusted Suislan with their hard-earned money were frustrated with it, they swore never to invest in Suislan ever again. Many thought it was similar to the Enron fraud of year 2001. But this was not like that. It was sheer bad luck. By 2020 Suislan had entered into debt restructuring deal with its lenders and was slowly turning the corner, but before it was completely out of the corner Suislan would be hit by the biggest storm it will ever face in its lifetime. Tulsi Tanti the founder of Suislan Energy passed away on 1 October 2022 from a massive heart attack while arriving home from airport. This was just 10 days ahead of the rights issue, which on completion would signal the rise of Suislan Energy version 2.0. Tulsi Tanti, whose pioneering efforts in wind energy earned him the moniker the Wind Man of India. By June 2023 Suislan had reduced its debts to 3,200 crores. This debt, it plans to pay off within the next eight years. So if things go according to plan Suislan could become debt-free by 2031. In October 2022 Suislan came up with rupees 1,200 crore rights issue which got oversubscribed. This oversubscription of rights issued was the real turning point. At that time share price of Suislan Energy was just Rs 6 R7. Why Suislan is a multi-bagger? Is Suislan a multi-bagger? Can it grow 10 times? Can it grow 100 times? Can it grow 1000 times? Since the rights issue the share price of Suislan Energy touched a high of Rs 11.50, then Rs 15.30, and Rs 18.45. This means people who invested in October 2022 tripled their money, in 8 months. Those who bought it at Rs 2.25 grew their money almost 10 times. So now what remains to be seen is that if it can grow a hundred times and grow a thousand times. To be fair the direction of Suislan Wind Energy was not very clear in 2019 so hats off to those investors who bought it at 2.25. But as of today the direction of Suislan Wind Energy is very clear, it's on the runway taxiing on the runway on its own power, ready for a takeoff. What is a multi-bagger? A multi-bagger stock is an equity stock which gives a return of more than 100% in a very short time. So by that account Suislan Energy is already a multi-bagger stock. Of course it has still not achieved phenomenal growth like MRF Limited, Asian Paints, Pitalite Industries, Bajaj Finance, etc. But it could soon do. If you look closely you will be able to see that just like these companies are the best in their field. Suislan 2 is the best in its field in India, so it is very much possible. For 15 years from 2008 to 2023 Suislan was busy selling off its subsidiary companies slash assets to pay back its loan, taken to purchase Senvian. This was a time when Suislan was completely tied up. Yet no competitor could install more gigawatts than Suislan in 15 long years. Now when Suislan is let loose, do you think its competitors can outperform Suislan? Wind energy companies in India please note that not all of them manufacture wind turbines. Companies like Adani, Tata, JSW, Torrent, SJVN, KPI Green are clients, of companies like Suislan, and they do not manufacture, install, or maintain wind turbines. They are not competitors to Suislan. Suislan has no competition. Most stock analysts create a big blunder by clubbing all of these companies together. Stock market app Money Control wrongly club Suislan along with electrical appliance makers like Havels India, Laxmi Electricals, Focus Lighting, etc. under electrical equipment which is a big blunder. Suislan is a wind turbine maker, something completely different from what these companies do. You cannot even club wind energy companies with solar energy companies as both are very different. Is Suislan a penny stock? Penny stock is a stock which is valued less than US dollar 1 or Indian rupees 87. Thus Suislan Energy is also a penny stock. It is very rare that you find multi-bagger opportunity in penny stocks. Suislan Energy is unfairly compared with other penny stocks like PC Jewelers, Yes Bank, Reliance Power, Vodafone Idea, Alok Industries, etc. What makes Suislan stand out from others is that unlike these companies, Suislan was, and still is, the best in its sector while the other companies, they are not even one of the better companies in their sector. Should I buy or should I sell? Well that would be your decision to take. We are neither advising you to buy or sell. 
By buying or selling shares of a company you expose yourself to market risk. So always consult your financial advisor before you invest. We are just putting the facts and data in front of you. At rupees 50 or 60 it is not even the price of two sandwiches on the streets. You don't always get the opportunity of getting the best company in the industry at rupees 50 or 60. Cavit Emptor, be aware of stock market risk. Of course there is every chance that Swiss lawn share could come down back to rupees 5. The next variation of COVID could hit the market and bring all the industries to a lockdown again, or a war might erupt somewhere or riots happening somewhere or change in government policies, or sudden change in government in power itself or some controversies erupts in the industry, or some inside corruption or fraud, rumors, etc. American banks could once again collapse. American stock market could again collapse. American dollar could collapse. All such cases could severely affect the Indian companies in the stock market, and the stock might collapse and go back to rupees 5. But this is a risk with all the stocks one buys at the stock market, be it Adani or TCS. So what are the other aspects of Suez Lawn? Is Suez Lawn involved in traditional business, sunset business, or sunrise business? For example coal industry or business is a sunset business because although there is a good demand for coal today India will reduce its use as cheaper, better, safer and cleaner alternatives become available. It is very easy to invest in companies by looking at the past profits or financial ratios of a company. Even a well-informed class 10 or a commerce student can do it. The financial ratios tell the current state of the company. It doesn't show the future potential of the company. When evaluating a company we need to evaluate the kind of business it is in. Coal, petrol and diesel as an industry can be considered a sunset industry, because worldwide the governments are trying to reduce its use in the long run. The world has already started to pivot towards renewable energy like hydropower, wind power and solar power. Of these hydropower is very expensive and time consuming to construct. Wind and solar plants are very easy to set up. Now in wind energy business, how many companies are there in India? That too for as long as Suez Lawn was there. For 28 years? Many companies started installing wind energy because Suez Lawn had in the past 15 years slowed down due to its debt obligations. Yet nobody could overtake it. Has even one Indian company other than Suez Lawn installed 20 gigawatts in India? In their lifetime? Manufactured? And installed? Suez Lawn's only threat is from China, inferior cheap Chinese parts used by competitors. But now the pressure and sanctions on Chinese companies are mounting. In share market the risks should always be calculated. But how much risky is a rupees 50 or rupees 60 stock? Another aspect is its service and maintenance cash flow. Many people do not understand that unlike solar energy, installation of every wind energy turbine comes with annual maintenance contract because repairing or servicing a wind turbine is not a joke. First of all it is so high up in the air that you need specialized trained staff and equipment to service it. So companies that install wind energy usually get the contract to maintain service and sometimes even replace these equipment if it suffers damage in bad weather or storms. Such contracts are for the lifetime of these machines. It is more like an insurance than servicing but it's actually both. The more wind farm a company installs the more maintenance contract they get. Thus Suez Lawn has a good operating income from maintenance contracts. Solar panels farms are comparatively small and cheap but they need constant cleaning and also a lot of land surface area. Another disadvantage of solar is that it doesn't generate power at night. Meaning 50% of the time they do not generate power. Solar also doesn't generate enough power during rainy or cloudy days. Meaning in total, out of 24 hours and 365 days, a solar power plant works efficiently for less than 40% of the time. The users of solar power and wind power are as different as chalk and cheese. Solar power with or without battery is great for individual rooftop homes but for power plants generating constant power both solar energy and wind energy is required to maintain the continuous power output. Solar power plants are usually below 100 MW while wind power plants are usually always above 100 to 200 MW. Monopoly Status Swiss Lawn Energy is almost like a monopoly. When it comes to wind energy so as lawn energy is a giant, it is the best and the most experienced wind energy company in India. It is almost like a monopoly, like Asian paints in paints, iPhone in smartphones, 
nestle in baby foods. Suez Lawn is not a total monopoly but almost like a monopoly. It towers head, neck and shoulders above the rest. It takes 30% of the wind power tenders in India. But please note that it doesn't have the pricing power of monopoly companies mentioned. This is because the tenders are awarded based on the cost per unit of electricity generated. So they cannot raise the price when they feel like it. Companies like iPhone, Asian Paints, MRF, Nestle can easily raise their prices without losing market share. Installing 500 gigawatts by 2030, the countdown has already started. India needs to install 500 gigawatts of clean energy at a blistering pace by 2030. Of this 40% will have to be wind because historically it has always been approximately a 60-40 market. 60% solar and 40% wind energy in India. World's renewable energy requirement let us assume that there is approximately 500 gigawatts of renewable energy needed in Europe, 500 gigawatts in Africa, 1,500 gigawatts in US. African market will be 100% captured by China. US might not give Indian companies business. But Suez Lawn has good chance to bid for installation in areas it is already familiar, in Europe. Cold and snowy Europe will have to depend a lot on wind power. In the past 28 years Suez Lawn has installed 20 gigawatts worldwide, meaning it installed approximate 714 megawatts every year. Meaning if Suez Lawn can install 4 to 5 gigawatts in next two years it can get back its lost position. But due to the pressing energy need, that too clean energy, for India by 2030 Suez Lawn could possibly achieve much more than that. This report says 21.5 gigawatts of onshore wind is forecast to be installed from 2022 to 2026 in India. Meaning what we saw of wind energy business in India till now, was only a trailer, the movie is just about to begin, installation of 21 gigawatts in four years is huge and unprecedented business opportunity. To put this in perspective in 28 years it installed 20 gigawatts. India's Renewable Energy Requirement India is expected to set up 500 gigawatts of clean energy by 2030 of which 200 gigawatts will be wind energy, that is if you consider the 60-40 ratio of solar to wind energy. Indian government is also expected to tender for about 10 gigawatts wind energy annually, till 2028. Reverse auction which was detrimental for wind energy also has been stopped. The company has upgraded its wind turbine to 3.1 megawatts per turbine. Meaning it can double its output in the same area. It can also get more business in its existing parks by upgrading the turbines for doubling the output. So when these information is combined what becomes clear is that Suez Lawn could easily install more than 1 gigawatts per year. But will India need so much new electricity? Of course India will need electricity. India is in the fast lane, switching over to electric vehicles fast and furious. Electric scooters, electric three-wheelers, electric car and electric buses are becoming common sight in India. India is truly scripting an electric revolution. More electric buses are being cited every day than six months ago. These air-conditioned electric buses have today become a very comfortable and even economical way to travel in the city. Today there are metro trains in almost every big city in India. Metro trains run on electricity. Just look at Wanda Bharath, it's an electric vehicle, it is expected to replace almost every single diesel engine in India. Even goods train will be pulled by electric engine can you comprehend the impact it will have? Other than that bullet trains too will soon make their presence in India again requiring huge amount of electricity to run. Electric boats Electric boats have been deployed in Kachi, Kerala and have become a big hit. Cheaper to operate, noiseless and vibration free the passengers are today enjoying their travel in air-conditioned electric boats at very economical prices. These electric boats are also a tourist attraction. All this will need electric energy, and all renewable energy companies who install and generate electricity will make money. The year 2024 was Suez Lawn's first year of profit since 2007. This was a year of comeback. Suez Lawn's CFO has hinted at it considering having discussion about dividend payout around May 2025. We are not a SEBI registered investment advisor nor is this a recommendation to buy or sell the stock. Stocks can move positively or negatively depending upon the market sentiment. Make sure you consult your financial advisor before investing in stock market. Never ever invest in stock market by taking a loan because there are always chances the stock price can nosedive exactly like Suez Lons did, from Rs 398 to Rs 2, 
If SUS loan reached rupees 398 in 2008, when BSE index was just 18,000 and SUS loan had below 10 gigawatts installation, can SUS loan reach above rupees 400 in the year 2030? When BSE index is expected to go past 180,000, assuming that BSE grows at 14% annually. If the previous high of rupees 398 is adjusted for inflation, it would be around rupees 1,100 today. In 2008, the size of Indian economy was much smaller than it is today. In the year 2030, the size of Indian economy of 2023 will look much smaller. This is because the benefits of digital economy, mature GST implementation, electrification, UPI, fintech, huge predicted growth in MSME and renewable energy will all start kicking in. <laughs>